beautiful for us is it is our response, your responsibility, my responsibility, our responsibility to discover our gifts Amen. and discover the ways in which the Lord would have us contribute to the body. Amen. Because as members of, of the body of Christ, he gives us all gifts that are given to us by the Holy Spirit. They're called spiritual gifts. He gives us with supernatural ability that, that, that are given to be a blessing to others. And to empower and to strengthen one another. And as soon as you say yes to Jesus, the next step is, Lord, how do you want to use me to help somebody else? Amen. Pastor Kerwin's favorite song, Commission, Lord Jesus, help me. That's a trivia. You might need that later on today. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me to help somebody else. The soul is crying out today to those who do not know the way. Brother Damone is about to shout. It's my desire to be a guiding light so the world may see through me the love of Christ. Come on, say, Lord Jesus, help me to help somebody else. As a member of the body, we're support there's supporting ligaments and there's pieces. We want to make sure that everybody makes it. Why? Because we're all related. It doesn't make sense when we desire to see someone else fail, even if they're our enemy, because our enemies even are a part of our family. Amen. And if we really got deep, which this isn't a deep Sunday, but if we really got deep and we started talking about the things that have hurt us in life, most of us can point back to our families right. and experiences in what they call family of origin. Those experiences that hurt, that hurt us deeply came from the people that should have loved us or they even did love us. Amen. Amen. But yet God calls us to move beyond that. Right. So family, being family doesn't mean we don't hurt each other because we do. It doesn't mean we don't disappoint each other because we do. Right. Doesn't mean that sometimes we even discourage one another, but and but we do. Yet God calls us to continue working it out. Right. One thing the family does, you work it out. You fix. You, 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 it's hard to live and be a part of a household for a considerable amount of time and not working through whatever it is Amen. that yeah. that's ailing you. You can try, but it's really hard when you both have to go to the refrigerator <laughs> and get something out. It's really hard when you got one toilet and one sink. It's really hard when you've got to cross through the door every day and, and you've got to share a television and remote or, or that space together. It, it makes more sense to work it out. Tell somebody, yeah. work, it out. work it out. God calls us to work it out. There, It is not, not acceptable for us to have it all or to keep things against each other without pressing into the work. Right. And it takes work to be family. Yes. And it takes work to stay family. Mm -hmm. Wow. But God expects it from us. Yes. One family. One body. One message. Can you say one message? One message. First Corinthians chapter one, verse ten says, I appeal to you, uh, let me look at that. One translation says, I urge you. Um, I'll read it from I read from the NIV. It says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Once the other translation said that you speak the same thing. Mm, look at that. There should be in the body of Christ one message. And that message really is, if you can continue there, um, the message really is um, a message of the cross in verse 18. So the message of our family is Jesus, his love, right. his life, his death. Jesus died on the cross. That's the message that we must all be speaking to one another, to everyone we meet. It's the message of the gospel. Amen. It is central to our existence as family. What makes us family is that we have heard and embrace the message of the cross that Jesus died for me. When he died for me and I accepted that, he brings me into his family. You all know I'm a, I, you know, I'm a reality, I like some, some reality shows. I like, those, I like reality shows. 
And one, but I like reality shows with a meaning. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't do the housewives <laughs> or the basketball girlfriends, whatever you call that. I don't do that. Is that what the name of it is? Love and him. I can't, I can't stomach all of that. That show is just making sense. She plays it all right. We'll have a love and hip hop table out there. So you can catch up. I don't even know so many more. I, I get it. I get it from the backyard. This long lost family. It's people who are searching for their biological parents. And the last one I watched is one who was searching for her biological um, um, mother that her father told her was out there, but never was never in the picture. And as they begin, and the father died, so she really felt liberty to kind of do the search deep. And she began to search and search, but but. I, but they, they never found the mother, but as they begin to do the DNA and all of that, they found out that the biological father wasn't her father. Uh -oh. She's looking for her mother. Her father told her to look, but, but they found that her father wasn't her father. But they were able to find her biological father. So that's, that's, that's deep, right? Some of y'all are like, you read my mail, Pastor? No, I'm not going to read <laughs> So now she's confused, and it's, it's really muddy now. They say, well, this family, they want to meet you. They do. That's the biggest thing about the show. Whatever the scenario, the mother, father, they find them, and they, and they ask. They say, we found your mother. We found your father. And they, the first thing that they usually ask is, do they want to meet me? They say, yeah, they want to meet you. And this family wanted to meet her, even though she she was broken now that her father wasn't her father. So she didn't have a lot of room in her heart to receive this new father. But uh, they did. She said, I'll at least meet him. And, and they embraced her. And they just loved her like, like she had all, always been there. And the biological father, to his, to, to his defense, he never knew he had a daughter out there. He never knew she was out there. He admitted that in his heyday, you know, in the 70s, he was a wild child and he was, you know, He admitted that he was a rolling stone a little bit, but he, he didn't know um, that, that this woman had a child. So it was new to him. He said, if I would have known, I would have loved you from day one. And I love you now. I want you to be, I want you to meet my children. And I want you to be part of our family. And they embrace her and accept her. And even though she was reserved, she couldn't resist. When we love authentically, the world will not be able to resist. Amen. Amen. And, and when we love in a way that our message is consistent. So let's go to the Lua translation. Speak the same thing. It's important that we speak the same thing. You know, on the reverse side of it, this is the other, on the dark side of that comment, you know, you see, if, some, if two people commit a crime, that's the hard part. You got two people. And the hardest part is getting them to speak the same thing. No. That's another one, like the 48 hours. I watched that. <laughs> they had these little two teenage girls that killed their mama. Oh. And they had their little story together, but then they separated. And then the story, they, they now they're trying to remember, what did I tell her to say? And they, they, they caught them both. They, you know, they're doing life in prison. These two kids that killed their mother in cold blood. Because, you know, the, the crime is terrible, but the truth is they couldn't speak the same thing. The evidence wasn't so surmounted. They could have kind of gotten away with it, but they couldn't speak the same thing. How much more as the body of Christ, as the people of God, as our presentation of God to the world that we live in, we've got to speak the same thing Amen. so that we can be perfectly united in mind and thought. We should complete each other's thoughts. That's right. We should have the same mind because we're family. Amen. My last, my last thought for you today is this whole matter of... Um, Finding in this place, as we get ready to go outside and hang out together, my prayer is that we won't gravitate or congregate around the people that we know. I know there's some people that I'm going to run to. I see Sister Mary Richard back there, so I'm, I'm hugging her first. <laughs> Just wave at her, Sister Mary. So good to have you.
thank you so much for standing with me, praying with me. I'm, I'm hugging her first, but but we don't want to just congregate to the ones that we know, but we want to get to know those that we don't know. And I believe the power of any uh, uh, authentic church that we've been talking about is the power of our stories. Take a little time to not only to greet one another. Where are you from? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Because when we, when we hear each other's stories, that endears us to each other. That's what really endears us to each other. When we sat down with Sister Wendy and her sister uh, Marsha, and they began to tell us um, when we had our girls, and they began to tell our girls about how they grew up as sisters, you know, Madison and Morgan, they're like, oh, we like them. So Sister Wendy, like, I'll come over and get you. Put my convertible down. They went out, they had their little bag and their sunglasses, and she just took them, they just went out. Because they just identified. These two sisters, we're sisters, so they get it. And the Bible tells us how important it is to keep in our midst this understanding and the truths of who we are and where we've come from. Amen. Amen. Earlier we sang, your love lifted me. Um, that comes from an old hymn. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. Well, we not only need to sing of the love that we are now basking in, but we need to talk to each other about the sinking deep in sin. Right. <clears throat> there are those who are here today who need to know that there are others here today like them. Uh -huh. Paul says it, he says this phrase, such were some of you. Right. Yeah. He gives a list of some 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 transgressions of some 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 areas of sin that people walked in, but he's speaking to the church and he says, such were some of you. Mm -hmm. And when, when I hear that, and when I read that, I hear Paul saying to me, uh -huh. Kerwin, you need to tell some of the brothers what you've been through. Amen. Mm -hmm. You need to tell some of the married men some of the, the challenges that you've had in your own marriage. Mm -hmm. I know y'all see us now and y'all go, oh, this is so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but we will both tell you, Pastor Madeline and myself, to get where we have and, and not have killed each other. <laughs> and I asked her, I said, honey, will you leave me? She said, I'll never leave you, honey. I might kill you. <laughs> Joe and, you know, 
You don't have to go straight to the <laughs> to work through it together. And that's my prayer for us as a church. That's my prayer. I mean, it, I, I want to show, I want to open up this, this, this shirt. I want to, if you want, if you can see my heart, my heart as a pastor is that God's people would just love each other. And that's yeah. how I am as, as a father, by, you know, with my family, my church. The whole thing for me is we got to love each other. Got to get along. There's, there's no, no, you got to get along. Madison will tell you right now, the, you know, some terrible memories. I, you know, if I, they weren't getting along, I'll make them hold hands. <laughs>